Now, please get seated. We uh, have the intro to the presentation of the mandate. We now come in to present the mandate for immediate operation. And it's going to go live today before 12 midnight online. Amen. Shall we give Jesus a big hand of praise? Praise the Lord. I have the privilege to present the overview of new inclusions in the revised edition of the mandate. There are three levels. Number one, multi-level system of church administration enhanced. Number two, localization of church administration. And number three, desecularization of the spiritual administrative structure of the church. We serve a God of new things. Isaiah 58, verse 5 to 9, my thoughts are not your thoughts. For the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto a perfect day, Proverbs 4, 18. As we behold him through the world, we see brighter and we are changed from glory to glory. 2 Corinthians 3, 18, abridged. As commonly said by the founder, if one is not willing to review his approach, he cannot improve on his result. Having walked the previous edition for 12 years, we have learned quite a big experience and quite a lot from the world that has informed these new inclusions. Also of note is the fact that the church is several times above where we were in 2012, which demands a review of approach. However, while the mandate remains the same and the fundamental structures remain in place, this edition has only addressed essential details towards improved results of our operations. Number one, the multi-level system of church administration. These has proved most profitable with the various aspects of our statutory bodies taking part in the church administration as the pastors are required to serve the table. Shall we give Jesus a big hand of praise? This edition reviews the functions of the various statutory bodies and added some other essential bodies like the church ministerial council, the CMC. Number two, localization of church administration. It is a system that makes the local assembly responsible for their growth and development by taking responsibility of areas such as church growth and expansion, finance and budget, infrastructural development, and many others. The infant churches are taken care of by placing them under the oversight of specific mainline churches. Number three, desecularization of the spiritual structure. We recognize all offices as narrated in the Holy Church, which includes the five ministry gifts, apostles, prophets, and others. Other offices included, such as the bishop, the overseers, the presbyters, the elders, the deacons, and many more. We also believe any office in church administration that is not recognized in scripture may not be spiritually healthy, particularly as the world is creeping fast into the church and the church is getting lost into the world. This is what informed the need to desecularize the spiritual administrative structure of this church to avoid future derailment from the spiritual foundation upon which we build. The following areas have been revealed. Number one, the office of the president. The office of the president shall now be called the office of the founder stroke apostle over this commission. This is to emphasize This is to emphasize the spiritual responsibility of the office as well as the apostolic status of the ministry. God once told the servant, I'm launching you into the apostolic phase of your ministry for pay setting, and I open unto you the gates of nations today. Number 2, the secularization of vice presidency. The vice presidents shall now be known as presbyters. First, First Timothy 4.18, neglect not the gift that is indeed which was given to thee by, presby, by prophecy with the laying of the hands of the presbyter. The definition of a presbyter is as follows, an office bearer who exercises teaching, priestly, and administrative function, functions in the church. This is as rendered by dictionary.com. 
Number three, the executive secretary. The executive secretary shall now be known as the mandate secretary. <laughs> Number four, what is presently known as the executive council shall now, shall henceforth be called the council of priests with all the functions of the executive council vested in it. And number five, what was known as the cabinet in the former edition of the mandate shall now be called Mandate Administrative Council, which shall serve as implementation platform for the policies passed by the Council of Priests of the Church. Finally, we have also prepared seven new manuals ready to publish for our church administration, administrative operations, which are for internal circulation alone. These are to guide the operations of management and statutory bodies of the church. This manual includes, one, the Global Church Central Administrative Manual. Two, the Local Church Administra Administration Manual. Three, Pastoral and Non-Pastoral Staff Policy Manual. Four, Church Growth Manual. Five, Special Services and Membership Manual. Six, Finance Policy Manual. And seven, Project and Maintenance Policy Manual. Special note, the BOT in the revised mandate refers to the BOT, the Board of Trustee of the Global Church, to which other Board of Trustees of other nations are answerable. And as contained in the mandate, membership of the Board of Trustee Global is for life, except where individuals step down their membership for personal reasons and other matters as contained in the revised edition of the mandate. In conclusion, the inclusions in the revised edition are for impl immediate implementations across board, that is, both in the home and foreign mission. Thank you. Give Jesus a big hand. A big hand of praise, everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we together give the Lord a bigger hand of praise? Amen. Order is the breeding ground for progress. Order is the breeding ground for progress. At 16, 4, and 5, and that will be our experience. The Bible says, and as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. This has taken months, unending hours in God's presence for all the members of the team involved including the Board of Trustees, the defunct Executive Council, to come out with this. So there are decrees to be kept. And by keeping these decrees, the church will be established in the faith and increase in number daily. Aren't you excited about that? Yeah. Well, let me say this, therefore, the whole of this is as orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. And so it's sure to back up whatever you orchestrate. So we are sure of delivery as we engage with this. This is done with the purest of conscience in looking at the future of the church. We are not looking at today, we're looking at future generations. This edition will last for decades, Amen. will remain functional and relevant Amen. till Jesus returns Amen. in the name of Jesus. Because whosoever do the will of God shall abide forever. Living by scriptures secures the future, secures posterity, secures coming generations. Now, everyone search for your hand this way. And as for the breath of the Holy Spirit, 
to empower all operators across board, across the nations of the world with grace to engage with the decrees of this revised edition. The former one saw us into quantum leaps of growth. Several times over where we were 2012 today. Within the next 12 years, we'll be several times above where we are now. Lord, confirm the word of Acts 16, 4 and 5 as this goes into operation today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Therefore, in the name of God the Father, the Son, Amen. and the Holy Ghost. Yes. Revised edition of the mandate of May 2024 is presented today, May 18, 2024, for the growth, expansion, and establishment of this church. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so shall it be Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Give the Lord another big hand of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Also, you are informed about the seven separate manuals. These manuals are details, part of which are will contain the former edition, but they are personal to us. This contains the mandate and what we are sent and what we are doing. And this is how we do them are contained in those uh, relevant documents of the church. Can I hear your amen? amen? And therefore, internal circulation only. Praise God. Hallelujah. But today, by the grace of God, this goes live before the day runs out. And everybody can now have access to it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks. Give God thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jesus, for this new chapter. Thank you for this new chapter, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. That was a very powerful video by Bishop Oedipo and... Uh, um, mandate secretary of the living faith church worldwide so i won't be saying too much but a lot has been said in this video so you're welcome to the commentary section of this video where we make analysis about what the content is all about so today's video is a very critical one and it's um, very sensitive because it's talking about the succession talking about positions talking about when bishop oedipo leaves the office how will other apostles handle the office so it is very important that these principles are laid down by the founder so there won't be tear apart issues in the body so for me, I won't say that Bishop Oedipo has done an extreme great job in the administrative sector of the Living Faith Church. Aside the administrative sector, a lot of sectors in the church, he has really touched it from leadership to financial policies to administrative uh, policies and others. And this, this I must say, is really commendable because. A lot of churches need to start working on the path of succession. You cannot be here forever as a founder. You cannot be on the earth forever as a founder. I felt emotional actually when he was talking about when they're talking about succession and everything and other things like that. So but it is life. We have to be prepared for that day when he hands over to the next future apostle of the ministry. So it's very important to know that these principles also will guide the next person who is coming because 
um, the next person who is going to come into as the future apostle of the commission would be somebody who is responsible and one who can lead. And I love that part, but it's not in this video actually. Where we talk about the future apostles of the commission is going to um, serve a one year term for seven years. That part is sweet. And also, uh, you're going to um, also stay in Kenya land. There are a lot of, a lot of um, uh, review on the mandate that as an apostle of the commission, you have to see, must stay in Kenya land and um, you must not exceed 65 years before that position is given to you. I really love that. And I wish that our government in Nigeria can also emulate this principle. It's a very gracious one and I'm so proud of the winner's family because it, 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 it's really recommendable and I pray that God will help us so that the body of Christ will keep growing well in the part of administration in the name of Jesus. I'm sure you were blessed by this video. Please take your time watch it again. You can share it to somebody who may need to watch this video. Remain blessed and have a great time. Thank you.